Hello everyone, Linda Brayman here for Senior Moments. It's November, and even though the fall colors are disappearing as the month progresses, we do have Thanksgiving to look forward to. When family gets together and we think about what other things we're grateful for, I hope you are thankful for a program like Senior Moments. Senior Moments covers events and activities at senior centers in the Ann Arbor, Ypsilanti area, such as the Ann Arbor Senior Center, Turner Senior Resource Center, the Pittsfield Senior Center, and the Ann Arbor Community Center. Also, the show provides valuable information for senior citizens on such issues as health, wealth, finance, and entertainment. Senior Moments is a monthly show. It premieres on the last Sunday of the month at 5 p.m., and it reruns 10 times a week on CTN Channel 16. Please check our website, a2gov.org backslash CTN for the playback schedule. Also, you can watch the show on YouTube. Please log on to youtube.com slash CTN Ann Arbor to view current and archived shows. Enjoy the weather while you can. Any day now we could get the big snowfall, then we'll be outside shoveling snow. Or maybe we'll be inside watching Senior Moments. Stay tuned. Welcome to Senior Moments. I'm your host, Brigitte Maassen. Today we have two guests. One is a photographer, Susan Kelly, and the other one is a watercolor artist, and a graphic artist, and they happen to be both sisters. <laughs> welcome to CTN, and welcome to Senior Moments, and we are glad and we are so happy to have you and see all this beautiful artwork you do. Thank you. And Thank you. Thank yes, you for having us. Yes, and actually I made myself some notes so I wouldn't, you know, forget anything, but uh, I think one of the things usually the, the uh, viewers like to know is, what is your background and how do you have, you know, a little bit about your life? I think people are always interested in that. Okay, well you can start, Sue. Well, I'm Susan and I didn't take up photography until I retired uh, about five or six years ago. And before that I worked, I'm a social worker and I worked in child welfare and ended my career at a foundation in Seattle that works with children and families all over the United States. Are you both from from for from Detroit? Oh, oh okay, great. Um, I've pretty much painted all my life. My father was an artist, and he had drawing lessons at our grade school. And my mother was very interested in textiles and fabric because she was a junior buyer at a big department store in town in Detroit. You know, J. L. Hudson's. Oh yes, when I remember. When it was J. L. Hudson's before it was Macy's. So my mom really had a love of fabric, so I think her influence really influenced a lot of my work. Um, I went to Ann Arbor for a couple of years um, at the University of Michigan before I finished at Wayne State University in fine art. Um, fine art has always been my passion. Uh, however, my business has been graphic design. So I do have my own company, and I've done pretty well during the pandemic and during the recessions and, and everything. And I just recently acquired a new account, which has made me very, very busy. So, um, and it's a big magazine. My, my background's in publication design. So I've always done publication design in my graphic design career. Um, working at small design companies, I was a vice president at Campbell Ewald, which is a large global agency in the publications department and now I'm freelancing and I have another global account for a magazine which I just came off deadline on. So if you see my puffy eyes, that's why. Um, I love of nature has developed from living in Ann Arbor. We grew up in the city, um, but Ann Arbor, I lived on North Campus and it's so beautiful there, it just when it was being developed for the university. And I think it, I got a love of nature that has sustained throughout my life, you know, has sustained me throughout my love, life. So it has influenced my work too. Wonderful. Very interesting. You're both from Detroit, and I, and I first, when I came here, uh, was in Detroit. Mm -hmm. You know, and, I mean, actually, I lived in Dearborn, but I also went to Wayne State. So, so there's a little connection there on, on, on for us. Anyway. And Detroit had such a beautiful 
Art Institute. Yes. And I, I didn't know it was unusual, but our father would take us on the bus every Saturday to the Art Institute. And he was such an he had such an appreciation of fine art and, and impressionism and all of the um, drawers and painters. And so we, we just were imbued from a very young age with art. And, um, and it was really a, a wonderful core value uh, to have. Yes, I know uh, that the Ann Arbor Art Institute was named the number one art institute in, in the U.S., you know, and I, I mean, which really deserves it. The know. Ann Arbor one? Or? Did you try no, no, Detroit one. Did I say Ann Arbor? You did. Oh, my God. Right. Right. Sorry, Institute take it back. Yes. No. Detroit Institute of Arts is fabulous. It's, yes. I worked there as a work-study student at Wayne State, and I worked in the graphic art department, it, which is all the works on paper. So, you know, I, I got to see the curators and their emerging views on work, which is really interesting as well. You know, just to work inside one of the most fabulous museums in the country right. and the world. Right, right. And to see the inner workings of yes. that was just so much fun. So today, you, both of you brought your art with you. Mm -hmm. And actually, Susan, you are the photographer. Maybe you would like to kind of mention, you know, tell about your photography and the two pictures you brought. P photos. Sure. sure, photos. Well, when I retired, as I, as I mentioned, Marge actually gave me some watercolors and some canvas, but I began to take a look around. I, I was always so busy in my professional life that I never took time to see. And um, I, I love this quote from Thoreau that says, it's not what you look at, but it's what you see. And the quote by Picasso that says, art, you know, moves away the dust of everyday life. So I just started to look differently, and I was fascinated by light, and I was fascinated by really what I saw. And I used to keep journals when I traveled, but I decided that my photographs would be my journals. So my, my photographs are two, you know, two, two tiered. One is what I, what I see and how I capture that, and the other is remembering, which is such a wonderful thing. So these two pictures, the top one is Budapest and the Parliament, and I was really fascinated by the light uh, of, of the building and the darkness of the sky and the contrast. And this picture is of the Odoff Gardens at Belle Isle in Detroit, oh. and the flowers are so delicate and so beautiful. And again, the light of the sky and the detail in the, um, in the purple flowers and this is one of our family's favorite flowers, hollyhocks, which were in our backyard. Oh. So those are two, two photographs. And I love um, actually taking them. And then I don't edit them. I just try to keep them like they are so that I can remember them as they were. Do you just do the photography for, for your pleasure or do you also just sell? Just for pleasure. No. Yeah. I mean, I've had a few people want to buy them, but I, but I do them for pleasure. And actually, as you mentioned, you have a gallery in your home. I've hung so many of my photographs in our home. So, Wonderful. Yes, thank you. And Margaret, I mean, we have a wealth, you know, of your artwork here, and the colors are so vibrant and alive. And so tell us, you know, about your work. Well, thank you. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, the influence of nature on my work was really pretty profound. Even though my dad, who is an artist, as Susan explained, gave me this big tree trunk, which sounds really weird, but um, I had a tree trunk and I started drawing it, you know, and all the lines, you know, you mentioned my lines in this piece yeah, of work. Which, which is like uh, this, uh, is the, the, it's like ink and... It's, it's Crowquill pen, and I had an uh, instructor here, drawing professor Richard Wilt here, who taught all of us students how to use the Crowquill pen, which is very, very fine. Oh. So I just, um, after the tree trunk exploration, I started going more abstract, and I did these abstract drawings, which were also based on fabric and historical. There's a historical poem I kind of used to illustrate. Um, so there's a lot of influences that kind of weave together, no pun intended, because this looks like a weaving, um, to create what I do. Um, so I'm very interested, like some of these works, like this is a fingerprint. This looks like, you know, uh, maybe a geological map or something like that. But I'm also exploring the materials. There's crayon in there, watercolor, um, 
you know, I have multimedia in that. And I really have a love of materials. You know, that comes from my mother who loved fabric and textures and things like that. So um, the things that are, these are also, and this is a jelly bean. I call it jelly beans. But yeah, it also that's what looks, I thought. I was just mentioning it. It looked to me like <laughs> jelly beans, right. I call it jelly beans, but it really looks like cells, too. Yeah. And what I've done also, I have this here, is I've started <laughs> translating some of these to usable goods. You know, so this is my painting right here, and I work on a shop, and I create things to some th things can be used in the home. So you can use this, and also clothing. So I have clothing and, you know, totes and things like that on my website. So I like to try new things. I like to explore different areas. And I like to explore, but I do love materials. Like, I do love watercolor. Watercolor is one of my, my true loves and drawing. I mean, I had a drawing teacher, Patricia Quinlan, who said, if you can draw, you can do anything. And absolutely, that is so true. If you can get a plan, you can do anything. That, that's so true in my design career, too. Um, you know, if you can get a plan and see what something's going to be, you can make it happen. So drawing is very, very important to what I do. It's a, you know, it's just a way to explore different things. You know, so it's an exploration technique. And also it's a, a love of materials, like you mentioned the crow quill pen. Yes. You're really interested in that fine detail and things like that. Well, you know, you explore different papers too, to look at, to draw. So it's an exploration of the materials as well. It's not just, you know, sitting down and painting pictures. It's, it's lots of things, you know, that come together that are just plain old fun. You know, I would encourage anybody, if they have any interest in, in any kind of visual art, just do it. You know, because it's, it's very, it keeps you in touch with life. You know, and like the, the museum visits that our father did, I mean, I learned so much, so much more than I learned in my art history classes at school by going to the museum because you can inspect the techniques, you can look up close and see the brush techniques, you can look at what they were doing, you can be confounded sometimes and, and not understand it yet, but the more you visit, the more you will understand. But it is a true education to visit, and we are so lucky to have, like you mentioned, the DIA, and also the, the museum in town. And Ann yes. Arbor is very beautiful as well. Yes. I really enjoy going there. It's very quiet, the way they have things. You can pull out drawers and look at things. It's a wonderful museum. So I, I really encourage museum visits wherever you go. And I try to visit museums wherever I go, you know, different museums. Yes, I do too. Yes. You know, I love the Louisiana in um, Denmark. That was a beautiful museum. You know, and contemporary museums, they're so much fun. You know, so, you know, it all goes hand in hand. But it's just tied into living, too. I mean, I think art is essential for life. You can't, you can't really have a life without art. Yes, and music. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yes. Music, it's so funny because um, there's all this research going on with music and Alzheimer's right now. Really? Yes, oh. and it was true with my mother. My mother had dementia and Alzheimer's. And as she, but she used to play the piano. So when we go visit her, she really couldn't speak sometimes. But if we got her near a piano, definitely her memory for certain songs, her favorite songs came out, she could play. So yeah, definitely all kinds of art, you know, even literature and, and plays and theater and movies, just indulge. So at, at our later age, we should really involve ourselves more into the arts, in, maybe to help our brain, you know, so. Definitely. You know, I don't really like to talk about age. Yeah, no, 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 <laughs> no. Because I don't really believe in it. I yeah. mean, I like Buckminster Fuller said, age is weightless. You know, you don't really, you don't have to age, you know. And it's just, you stay alive by doing things that are positive and good for you. As long as you're interested in something, you know, and learn something new, I think, that plays a big role. Do stuff that makes you happy, yes. whatever it is. Yes. Whatever makes you happy, continue to do it. Yes. And that's the secret. I mean, you know, I, I kind of was hesitant about coming on the show because it was senior moments. Oh, okay. You know, and, and I really think we have more than moments. You know, we have a lifetime still to live. Yes. And 
So I wondered about really participating, to be honest with you. Um, but it's good to share what you do and to talk about things and get it out there in the world. I think it will be very uh, helpful for our viewers, you know, our senior move. I think you know everybody can watch the program. Some of you know, especially this is very interesting. Then also, you both had an exhibit at the. Uh, uh, I think it was at the. Uh, um, uh, wasn't had, it at the University had, Commons? We had three. We had one at, at Nature Cove Condominiums. It's our oh. first one, and then we were invited to put an exhibit up at Turner S the Senior Center. Sen yeah. Senior Center. Yeah. And so the, the one you just mentioned before. Where is that? Uh, it's a, it's my condominium. Oh, com I see. We invite people to put up their art um, regularly in the lobbies. Oh, and um, I need and to. The, you yeah. have to let me know because I would like to s yeah. come and see. And then we. Well, did that one's down already. We so were, so they're. Oh, but any future shows. Yeah, yeah, and then we did University Commons. We were um, last. I think we did it from July through September. We had an exhibit there. And one of the things that Marge was mentioning that not only do what makes you happy, but you know, one of one of the things that I just notice about getting older um, is that we have time. Yes. Especially if we retire, um, and and you want to fill that time with something that's so, you know, useful or fun or makes you happy. And for me, you know, that has been just such a gift in my travels. Um, to be able to photograph and then to come home and to remember that where I was and to be able to see and recapture the beauty of the nature and the beauty of, of, the, of the places where we don't live but we come home and we say, wow, that was so beautiful, like Budapest or like the other places that we travel. So, No, I, I understand, but it's interesting because I retired 34, uh, for, you know, I worked for 34 years at the university in 2015. Uh, uh, and I have been busier than ever, mm -hmm. you know. And I, you know, I thought, how, how come? You know, this is so interesting. But mm -hmm. you know, when you're interested in a lot of different things, yeah. then you sometimes you don't have enough time, you know. Yeah. Anyway, so and you uh, use your time differently, right? Is there maybe something I didn't ask you? You would like to maybe, you know, tell us about both of your artwork? Well, the only thing that I I might share is that when I was five. My father and mother encouraged me to send a picture in to a contest. It was a drawing contest. Oh. And I drew a robin. It was the springtime. And I thought it was the most beautiful bird in the world. It so is, yeah. what I saw was my drawing of this bird. And I happened to win and I got a little book and you know it was inscribed to a budding artist. And I think that was sort of an inspiration for me to think I could be an artist of some kind. And that's another thing that I just think is so important. The encouragement we give and the support that we give to artists and, and the appreciation of people's artwork and, um, and even being able to expose yourself, as Marge said, she wasn't sure she went, but to be able to let others see what we do and to have some appreciation for it, you know, sort of is an affirmation for you. So. That's one of my memories of, uh, of, our, of our time on Harvard Road in Detroit. That's a really good point. I just would like to sort of enhance that a little bit, um, to really try to be encouraging to people who are in creative endeavors. I mean, maybe you don't understand it at first, but I think it's very important to encourage people who are in the arts, wherever way you can. You know, financially, if you can help them, if you can just make a fun comment or an encouraging comment or notice what they're doing. You know, um, I, I've been teaching for 12 years. I taught too. Oh, yeah. I forgot to ask you. You, you uh, uh, also uh, uh, teach at uh, Henry Ford uh, uh, Community College in Dearborn. Correct. Yeah, and tell me. So and I also taught at Spex Howard School of Media Arts. Oh, yeah. Which they developed a graphic design department out of their broadcasting. Broadcasting, right. Because right. a lot yes. of announcers and broadcasters have to have websites, so they brought in designers to teach. So I, I worked both places, and, um, you know, Henry Ford, too. And it's just so great to encourage students, you know, to, to see the budding career. And a lot of people have no resources, you know, and they just keep going. 
And you have to really admire people who are in that position. And they keep on going, and they keep plugging along. And it's because of what art gives us. You know, art gives us a lot. You know, so, um, but I, I am in awe of the students who continue under kind of harrowing situations. <laughs> but, and I'm not laughing at this harrowing situation. I'm just laughing at their determination and yes. their grit. You know, that's amazing. So I just think it's important to support the art, support it whatever way you can, with co positive comments, financially, you know, because it's such a, a life uh, um, promoting thing. I mean, art is very, very important. Oh, yes. Have you also maybe exhibit or at the uh, Ann Arbor Art Fair? No, no, no. You never, it's too no. much, it's too much red tape for me. Oh. You know, because I have business, you know, I'm pretty busy right now. Do you have also, you live in Chelsea, yeah? Yes. Do you have like a, 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 a like a, 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 a storefront? A, yeah. No, I don't. Oh, okay. I've thought about it, but I, I yeah. work out of my home. Oh, okay. I see. But my website is mgk-design.com. So I okay. do have a website and you I, can purchase yeah. some of this. There's a link to my shop there. Okay. So. I will. I will look it up, you know, okay, so good. I'm, I'm interested, you know, especially. I just wonder if there was anything else we kind of maybe, you know, uh, we didn't mention here, you know, about uh, uh, your artwork, your watercolors, you know. So you teach the watercolor and the uh, graphic design at Henry Ford? No, I do not. I teach graphic design. Oh, just oh, graphic design. Yes. I see. And oh. Photoshop. I have taught Photoshop, too. Oh, okay. And in one of our exhibits, I got to meet the person who's, who is the mother of the person who created Photoshop, and that was such a thrill, um, you know, to meet someone who created Photoshop. That was amazing. Wonderful. And they're out of Ann Arbor, so. Oh, I see. Well, I, the hotbed of art. Yes, I also want to thank you again for taking the time and hauling all your, your artwork here and giving, you know, everybody a chance to see it. And I'm so glad I met you too, Susan and, and Margaret, and uh, and and I, you know, I'm pretty sure everybody will enjoy our uh, little program we did today. Thank you so and, much. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for inviting us. Yeah. And thanks to Tim for inviting us. Yes, definitely. We have to thank Tim. You know, bringing all these wonderful programs for. You probably don't like it, seniors, you know, to see. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I have to accept reality too. Yeah. You but, know, we all have to accept reality, but on the other hand. Try to put it in a positive light. That's yeah. all. I, that's all. My point was. I didn't mean to be insulting. I just, you know, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard getting older, but you want to try to be positive about it because right. there's not much we can do about it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much again. And You're I welcome. Hope, I hope our viewers would like to uh, uh, will enjoy this program, and hopefully, you know, everybody will see it. Thank you so much again for coming. Thank, Thank you. you and sharing. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on Senior Moments. I trust you enjoyed the show. And hey, if we do get a lot of snow, remember, just keep your sunny side up. I'm Linda Brayman, wishing you a happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>